Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Dr. Jamil Fassin, a postdoctoral researcher in applied swine nutrition at Kansas State University. So Jamil, we've had, we've had you on the show before in the past, but would you mind giving the audience a short reminder about who you are and what it is you do at K-State? For sure, for sure. Thank you, Clayton, for having me here today. I'm Jamil Fassin. Uh, uh, I'm Brazilian and uh, I did my DVM, master's and PhD in Brazil. And now uh, I, I also work in a production company in Brazil. And now I'm doing a postdoc here together with the K-State swine, applied swine nutrition team doing several stuff, uh, of course, around nutrition. And that's the reason why I'm here today, I think so. <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah, one of those studies that you are doing there is one that I saw is about you feeding uh, carnitine during finishing, comparing treatment groups and feeding it for like the entire study versus just feeding it near the end uh, before market. Could you tell me a little bit about that study and what it is that you guys observed? Yes, yeah, sure, sure. So uh, in this trial, we, we had uh, two treatments and a control. So that would be a control diet. We used around uh, 1,800 pigs in two groups. And then we, we saw in the literature that we, we, we have a, a good amount of papers uh, digging into carnitine, not, even, not only for finishing pigs, but also for sows. Uh, but we didn't find any paper trying to address uh, the last period in the finishing phase. I mean, the last uh, four weeks uh, prior to market. So we want to see if uh, we can uh, have some effects in even carcass, uh, back fat, that is one of the main results that you can find in literature, carnitine affecting uh, back fat, reducing back fat. Uh, then we, we want to, to understand what happens if we provide carnitine uh, throughout the whole finishing period or if we just add it, add it to uh, the last 28 days in the finisher. Gotcha. So... Um... Did you guys spec, expect it to have like a larger effect in late finishing than the other stages of the finisher? Or like what did your hypothesis go like or look like going into that trial? Right. Yeah. Clay, we, we like when thinking about the whole finishing phase, we probably would, would like to address like, ah, what is the real carnitine effect through all the finisher? Uh, even having uh, through a, 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 an energy dependent phase until uh, 100 pounds. Uh, or 180 pounds or something like that. Uh, and then providing only in the late finishing phase, trying to understand, well, these pigs are not in, in their best uh, or maybe they are in their less efficient phase. So how about if we provide carnitine that has a mode of action that improves the, the, the energy utilization? So what is going to happen? Are we going to have some uh, effect in carcass uh, growth performance? And literally, uh, we haven't seen seen uh, much of, a, of an effect, like uh, comparing the whole, the control, and the late finishing uh, supplementation. We kind of have uh, similar uh, results in growth performance and carcass characteristics. We've seen some improvements when we provide carnitine throughout the whole finishing phase. I mean, we saw some uh, improvement in, in average daily gain in the in the first days. Uh, of course, when the pigs are more efficient, so they are in an energy dependent phase. So providing something, and 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 here, just I want to brief the 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 mode of action. Uh, the 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 carnitine improves the the transportation of the fatty acids into the mitochondria. So uh, it helps the uh, to to a better utilization of energy. So we saw this in the in the very beginning, like in the first uh, thirty days, uh, sixty days in the finisher. But throughout the, the whole finisher period, we haven't seen like any improvement, like more close to the end. And also when we provide carnitine in the end of the late of the finishing phase, uh, no differences were found. So uh, uh, when we went to the packing plant with all these pigs in the packing plant, we were expecting a little bit of a, an effect in, in at least back fat. And, and, and we also haven't seen any effect in, in back fat, all three treatments control. Uh, whole finishing phase or late finishing had the same back fat millimeters. But uh, people are asking us, well, you guys saw a two pound difference in hot carcass weight uh, uh, pigs that were supplemented with carnitine. The whole period in the finisher had two pound, were, were two pound heavier uh, 
in a car in a hot carcass weighs 10 point but the thing is we 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 got this numerical difference but it wasn't a, a, a statistical significant difference so uh, my bias here is kind of I, I I don't want to say that we had this difference uh, if we ran the stats and we didn't have any difference so the idea here was like oh, okay we had this this uh, two pound difference but maybe we we'll need to have some uh, more replications to to have some statistically difference here for hot carcass weight. But yeah, like the 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 summary of this study was that we we've seen some effects in the early to mid finishing phase supplementing carnitine, but throughout the whole period uh, we didn't see much of improvement in in the overall growth performance. And when we provide carnitine only in the end of the finisher phase, we have we also haven't seen. And just to point out here, Clay, uh, we can't say that with only this single trial, we, we, we are saying that carnitine doesn't work because uh, recently uh, a, a student here from K-State showed us some, uh, uh, re he did a review in, in many, many feed additives in, 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 uh, uh, finisher, in finishing phase. And he, he, have se he has seen that uh, on average, uh, uh, carnitine provides like a, 2% improvement in, in, in growth performance and also around 2% reduction in, in, in back fat. So the literature uh, provides lots of papers in, in carnitine and the average of these papers would be uh, this 2% improvement. Uh, but in our trial, and also we had two groups, I mean, one group we have a little bit of a, a bigger effect uh, 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 towards carnitine and the other group we haven't seen any difference. So when we put both groups, to, both groups together, uh, uh, no difference, no main differences were found. Gotcha. So why do you think it was that they had that larger impact early finishing rather than late finishing? Do you think it could have been um, like uh, requirement levels, like maybe early finishing, they had a little excess energy than they needed in the diet. So therefore carnitine had a larger impact, or do you think there's a different, I don't know, method at play there? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very good question, Clay. I think I think in this uh, uh, in this beginning of the trial, this first sixty days is the time where the pigs are really really efficient in, in converting in feed conversion. So when you provide, they are in an energy dependent phase. If you provide something that helps them to to the, to improve the utilization of the energy, uh, uh, probably this is the reason. This is the my hypothesis here uh, why they they get like a a, a, a higher they, they get heavier and, and, and had some uh, improvement in, in, in gain uh, uh, because they are in a, in a more efficient phase. Even though they didn't have uh, an improvement in feed efficiency, they uh, were heavier uh, after the uh, 30 and 60 days uh, for the ones that received carnitine. <clears throat> gotcha. Well, I appreciate you coming on and sharing all about those studies and I'll be sure to check back in with you later if there's any other studies that you have available. So. Yeah, thank you for coming on and sharing the study with us. My pleasure, Clay. And to everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com and don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed this episode and we are constantly on the lookout for the latest updates in swine nutrition. And if you have a swine nutrition related research trial that you would be able to share on our podcast, please send an email to nutritionblackbelt at swineit.com and we would love to talk about your research. See you later.